Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Soul Channel and Western Astrologer and this is a video, video about the full moon in Leo occurring on February 16th, 2022 at 11.56 a.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, if not, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This is the video with the Twin Soul Divine Connection update. So, Interestingly enough, um, before we dive in, I have just a couple of quick things to share. Behind the scenes, I have been working on two very special events and special sets of information for uh, the collective on this channel, and both are free. So the first thing is for those of you who were interested in the conversation on twins, the virus, the shots, um, mandates, the pandemic, and just how all of this is affecting your connection and your timelines. Um, what you can do is opt into the private list. I'm starting to collect interviews with experts who work specifically with Twin Flames, specifically with energy, to talk through how these things are manifesting and impacting twin connections. So you can find that uh, link to join my private list just below this video. The first in the series was a private conversation that extended beyond the YouTube conversation that I had with Don Marie about 2022 Twin Flame Energies. So if you'd like to get her channeled information about these things, twins, timelines, union energy, um, and the impact that the pandemics had on all of this, opt into the private list. I'm sending the email out this Sunday, and it'll only be for those on the private list. Unfortunately, for reasons I'm sure you all understand about the nature of the way this conversation has been, let's just say, uh, tailored on YouTube. Um, with certain videos being removed, I've decided to keep this exclusively available for free, but available uh, by recording access only on the private list. So you can grab that there. Secondly, at the end of this month, February 28th, or February 21st through 28th, I will be hosting a special event for Twin Flames called Shadow Work Week and Lightworkers called Shadow Work Week. And Shadow Work Week will be an opportunity to start to uh, understand the nature of your shadow when it comes to your connection, your light work, and your life so that you can transmute it and integrate it and step more directly into living with divine purpose and connecting from your heart and from your soul. Uh, in your connection. Working with the shadow is going to be a theme of 2022. Once I figured that out when I was doing the 2022 channeled messages, which are forthcoming for Twin Flames, um, I quickly put together a group of experts, many of you know them here on YouTube, to talk through things like the shadow work of the third party, why the divine would bring a third party into your divine connection and what you need to do and what you're supposed to be learning through that experience. We're going to be taught and made for love is going to join me for that. Many of you know her, know her channel. We're going to talk about the shadow work of the eighth house um, and eighth house astrology because the eighth house represents where our shadow and things hidden about ourselves live. Jai Gobin from Channel for Grace will join me for that part of the conversation. We'll have Dawn Marie back. She's going to talk about sexual shame and transmuting sexual shame so that you can live in the light of your, uh, your divine uh, eroticism and reclaim your erotic innocence. We're going to talk with um, Charlotte from Happy Twins about integrating your shadow into the light. We'll talk with uh, Divine Pisces 222 about pre-union shadow work and union shadow work triggers that come up just as you're on the brink of union and so many other great guests. Mark your calendar February 21st to the 28th. I will be announcing it here on YouTube and on my private list. 
It is absolutely free. And if you're the kind of person that loves to participate in live conversation, get those live questions in, hit that notification bell so that when I go live with each of these special guests, if you have a question, your question can be the one that's answered. And if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Jump on in. The community is great. Thanks so much. Let's get into this full moon in Leo for twin souls. Okay. Full moon takes place here at the 27th degree of Leo, and she is square the nodes. And I go into in depth what this means in the Lightworker Energy Update and the importance of understanding this in that video. I'm going to give just a brief overview now, but if you really want to be able to work with this energy, especially in your twin connection, then I recommend you have a look at that video because it'll illuminate some of why the things that happened in November, December, and January happened the way they did so that you can take that and understand how to work with the energy moving into the next several months and for the rest of the year. It's the first few minutes of the Lightworker Energy Update for the full moon in Leo. But Cliff Notes version, for those of you who are here, is that this full moon in Leo with squaring the nodes may have you feeling just a little bit like, why doesn't life want me to be happy? Why doesn't God want me to have what I need or have what I want? Can have you feeling just a little bit like every time things go well, another shoe drops. And what we're supposed to be learning and doing with this energy is really taking a solid look at the lessons of the last 90 days and where our personal stuck points are in our own shadow so that we're able to transmute them and integrate them into our understanding of our spiritual nature so that we can create appropriate boundaries and move more directly into the self-love that anchors the love of the connection here on planet earth. That's the cliff notes version, but for a detailed explanation and journaling questions on how to work with the energy, take a look at the light worker energy update. We have at this lunation, the divine feminine Juno right here at that fifth degree of Aquarius in conjunction with Chericlo, Mercury, and Pluto. She's speaking to the other three and they create a combined energy that brings a lot of power to the divine feminine. During the last, I would say two weeks since the last new moon, the new moon in Aquarius, this particular configuration of Juno speaking to Pluto would have brought forward an energy of interacting with raw power and the way we deal with direct confrontation from our fears and direct converse confrontation from the things about ourselves we are least comfortable with. That Pluto-Juno configuration, when Pluto speaks to a planet, Pluto brings forward all of the energy of shadow, fear, shame, guilt, secrets, debt, either financial or karmic, brings all of these things forward and it brings them forward in a conversation about our power. Are we going to let these kinds of things have power over us or are we going to have power over those things. And this is only highlighted by this full moon in Leo, which brings us into contact with choices regarding our sovereignty and choices about what it means to put our own oxygen mask on first and what it means to self-preserve so that we can preserve the energy of love and our connections where we have been steamrolled, laid out to our own shadow or our own addictions, where we have been dragged by other people's shadow or by, by our shadow, things that we would repress, we don't want to look at, we don't want to have to deal with, where we have been dragged by those things or allowed ourselves to not look at those things or deal with them or confront them. This last period of time, these last few weeks would have felt extraordinarily painful. 
for people who anchor in divine feminine polarity, don't have any integrated divine masculine energy at this time, and who are actively rejecting shadow at this time. For this to come full circle, two things can happen. You can integrate divine masculine energy, which is hanging out here in Pisces and wanting to bring forward the energy of spiritual attunement, understanding spiritual lessons of the moment, the alternative, if for whatever reason, you know, you need to stay anchored in divine feminine polarity for the lessons of this moment. The alternative is start to have a conversation about power. And what does power mean to you? And how do you deal with power? Are you going to cozy up to it? Do you run and hide from it? Do you try to manipulate it so that it's less scary? Are you enamored by it? Do you just fawn all over it and give away your power so that you can be close to someone or something you perceive as more powerful than you? The conversation about power in the divine feminine energy field is what's coming up during this full moon in Leo. And this full moon in Leo it puts a spotlight in divine feminine energy fields. It puts a spotlight on how do we deal with power and all the things that we repress that actually end up have power, having power over us because that which we repress just grows puppeteer strings and it marionettes us all through our lives. If we can learn how to integrate those things and own those things, we cut the strings and we take our power back. So again, I talk about how to do that in the Lightworker Energy Update, but this is the conversation in the divine feminine energy fields. And this would have only been brought more fully to the surface by the Mercury retrograde, which is hallelujah, now complete. Mercury was speaking with Pluto. Mercury is the energy of consciousness, conscious mind, conscious awareness, and communication. Where there has been difficulty in communication during that Mercury and Venus retrograde, now's the time to really rectify some of those things, have some of those conversations that you know need to be had in order to bring forward uh, the energy of clarity, the energy of balance, because we're not in such a heightened emotional state the way we were during the Venus retrograde and the Mercury retrograde back in December and January. Now's the time to have some really good conversations. These conversations can be about boundaries. They can be about your fear. It's a great time to be vulnerable in the divine feminine energy fields around what you learned in connection during those months with yourself or with others about where it is you know you've struggled in your own shadow and maybe even create some boundaries so that you can live in your own light going forward, okay? Full moon in Leo, all about self-love, creative paths forward, standing in sovereignty and making the choices that get you there. Okay. Interestingly enough, we also, and this is going to be an ongoing conversation this year. You're going to have, hear me talk about these two a lot. Juno is going to be in conversation all year long. And this is Juno right here with Chiron um, by sextile and with Uranus by square. These two are going to imbue divine feminine energetic templates with conversations around what do we do with our wounding? How do we uh, transmute the wounding, learn from the wounding, serve anyway in spite of the wounding, claim our worthiness and our, our mastery through what the wounding taught us. That's the Chiron influence there. Chiron speaking from Aries to divine feminine in Aquarius, which is the collective. How do we do that? And then we've got this Uranian energy, which is coming by square from Taurus. And this is like surprises galore from the third dimension. Many of them positive, but also many of them, because this is a square, may be triggering and pull up aspects of our shadow, especially given the way Uranus is going to speak to the nodes this year. 
and ask us, are you willing, you've paid all this lip service into wanting to be a divine being of transformation and growth and love and light. Is it lip service? Or are you going to walk the talk? And so there's this surprise energy building and divine feminine energetic fields where it can feel a little bit like there might be a few things that come just out of left field at certain points of the year. And you may start to see some of that occurring as early as this full moon in Leo. And they're only going to, that energy is only going to start to continue to build as we move into the coming months. The best thing you can do is find your way to understanding your own nature. That's part of why we had that long conversation at the start of the year with Venus and Pluto and Juno and Pluto now um, to get to know who are you when you're triggered, who are you at your lowest and start to build strategies around that so that as these surprises come in, you're not in a place where every surprise is dragging you back into your shadow. Instead, you've got really great tools to start to operate in the light. Okay. That is the divine feminine energy for this lunation. Let's talk about divine masculine energy, Juno, her counterpart, or Jupiter, her counterpart. So we've got Jupiter there at the 10th degree of Pisces, speaking in conjunction with Nessus. Nessus energy is the energy of obsession. It's the energy of doggedly chasing something down. Um, it's like over the top rumination and spinning on something an inability to drop it or let it go. It's, it's an energy of holding on. I'd almost even say it's a chasing energy. So because of the way the divine feminine has moved through earth sign Capricorn is now in collective sign Aquarius, there may have been a bit of a role reversal for some twins in the last 90 days as the divine feminine left Sagittarius, moved through Cap, is now in Aquarius. There may have been a little bit of a role reversal for twins who are in runner chaser states of their connection, where you may notice one person was doing all the chasing. That person has now switched and started just focusing on other things, just checking out altogether. The person who was doing all of the running may now be doing a little bit of obsessing about the connection. Um, normally, we see Jupiter in run mode, Juno in chase mode. There may have been a bit of a role reversal here at the start of the year for a lot of counterparts who recognize the run chase dynamic being quite active in their connection. But for counterparts who aren't in that, who are kind of, you know, in more of a settled place of either communication or state of union with your counterpart, what you may notice in this at this juncture is that the Jupiter energy is really starting to get obsessed about spiritual preservation, self-preservation. How do I connect into my higher calling at this moment and really step into my connection to source, the divine? How do I get into the flow state of where I'm at in my life so that I'm not fighting upstream so much, so that I'm not um, constantly in resistance to what life is bringing me? How do I get into surrender with what it is and face and deal with that? For those of you who recognize this part of things going on in your divine connection and in yourself, this Nessus energy is really kind of holding fingers to the fire and forcing you to get and learn how to surrender, how to go with the flow, how to stop resisting during this time. We have Jupiter sextiling Uranus as well. And with the Jupiter sextile to Uranus, again, there's a bit of surprise energy because this is a harmonious aspect for the divine masculine side of things and our divine masculine energy. What's nice because we all have both. Let's just start there. Any surprise the divine feminine may have found unsettling our internal divine masculine energy will say, but you know what? I can work with that. You know what? 
I can make something with that. You know what? There's something in this that I can allow to take me to the next level to lift me higher. And so if you are having that experience now or in the months to come, I would say maybe next 30 days really with Jupiter, um, and then Jupiter moves pretty quickly on from this aspect. The divine feminine seems to talk to Uranus all year long. At this particular moment, though, there's an opportunity to leverage anything that's been a challenge or a surprise or something that's come out of nowhere to push you or catapult you into accessing personal power, staying in divine flow, and bringing your service to a higher level of accessibility in the world. There's a lot of intuition in this. Jupiter and Pisces speaking with Nessus. A lot of opportunity for the dream state to speak very loudly to lessons that we are integrating and learning and things we need to know in the third dimension to stay in flow. So a lot of gifting here. Many people in divine masculine energetic field, or if you're anchoring in divine masculine polarity, you may notice at this time, certain spiritual gifts are starting to pop. They're really coming online. You're starting to notice either your Claire is opening, Claire audience, Claire cognizance, Claire sentience. You may notice any of your clairvoyance even. You may notice some of your um, em em empathic abilities opening or your intuition opening and your ability to just know and understand things about the people around you and to operate in mastery with them and take care of the people around you in better ways because you just get it. You start to pick up on things. Trust your intuition at this time, this full moon in Leo and going forward with Jupiter and Pisces through the end of May. This is really going to amplify intuitive connection through the divine masculine energetic fields. And again, for those of you, regardless of separation, states of communication or union, if you notice for yourself that in your connection, you know, you and your person operate in polarics as opposed to integrated energy at this time. And there's reasons you may do that. Um, you may find that the person, uh, the person who identifies it as divine feminine may be having a lot of intuitive hits and insights about the person who identifies as divine masculine. But for those of you who are integrated in the energy, this is What's really important to understand about this, if you are already recognizing strong divine femme, strong divine masculine energy in your field, you may be starting to just straight up feel what they feel, see what they see, know what they know, and process it as your own. And so it'll be really important as Mercury and Pluto are speaking with one another at this juncture to learn and exercise discernment because some days you may find yourself, you know, going into a depression spiral and associating it, tying it to things in your own world. When just four hours before that you were fine, that may not actually be your energy with Jupiter moving through Pisces and divine feminine and Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of the collective consciousness. Pisces is the sign of the collective subconscious with both divine counterparts basically hitting the airwaves and signal broadcasting throughout the collective. There's so much energy that's permeating our fields at this time that literally may have absolutely nothing to do with us. So it's so important to anchor into discernment as you move through this energy so that you, if something hits you and you're thinking it's yours, recognizing what you can do to turn the volume down if it's not, shift the energy so you can broadcast something that's higher vibrational if it's not, send supportive energy, supportive communication if it's not yours, but in, instead of amplifying it because you think it's yours, separating appropriately so that you can acknowledge the energy, but not carry it. That's some of the work. And this full moon in Leo will be, is beginning the process of some of that discernment for a lot of us. Okay. Um, but in order to fully discern it, 
one of the major steps this full moon in Leo and truly the rest of the year is asking us to do and to learn is how to integrate our shadow so that anything that we've repressed in us has a seat at our own table and isn't able to get button pushed or triggered by somebody else's repressed shadow. Okay. And that is why I will be hosting shadow work week at the end of the month. If you've already heard something that resonates with you before I get into further energies, I just want to go ahead and invite you to hit that subscribe button. If you're already feeling like, Ooh, this is a lot. I don't know how to digest it. My life is up in the air. I need some support figuring out how to work with this this year get on my calendar. We've got a couple more sessions left before the end of February and a lot more at the beginning of March. And that's just 14 days away, two weeks. So if you'd like some support thinking through this and mapping through the energy for yourself, get on my calendar at kmoonastro.com. We can look at how to work with these energies for yourself or within your divine connection. All right. Um, link is below this video for that. Now, we do have something really important to mention here, and that's Venus and Mars conjunct Capricorn. Now, for those of you who've been with me for a long time, you know that I read Venus and Mars as the human soulmates or the soulmates in a connection, whereas Jupiter and Juno are our divine counterparts in connection. If you have third party energies in your connection, a husband, a wife, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, they would be Venus, Mars type energies. If you're looking at your chart and trying to decipher and discern who's who, if you don't know, skip the labels. That's not the important part. The important part is how you walk in the love. And what's interesting about this full moon in Leo pertaining to divine counterparts with Venus and Mars in connection is that they're speaking in harmony to this Jupiter Nessus conversation here. And there can be a lot of clarity and illumination in our divine masculine energy fields about the distinctions between especially if you've had a counterpart or you yourself have been dealing with a false twin or an ascension partner or a soulmate, this is a moment in time where illumination can occur to help you understand, wow, okay, now I get why my connection is different with my divine counterpart. This can also be an energy of supreme motivation, hitting the divine masculine energy field and lighting a bit of fire under divine masculine energy fields, booty. Um, again, doesn't matter what body you incarnated into because we all have both energies, but it's a fire lighting energy that's letting divine masculine energies know it is go time. It is creation time. It is time to put the pedal to the metal and make things happen. And so during this period of time, you may find an extra boost of motivation that is also amplified by Pluto and the way Pluto has spoken to divine feminine. It's a lot of power here between both divine feminine and divine masculine to get going, make things happen, move life forward for both counterparts throughout the energetic field. And so where you can be in that energy in your life, it may not even be about your connection. It may be something your connection has inspired you to create or a way the connection has inspired you to serve. Where you're finding that pull toward taking an action and doing the next step, do it. There will not be a better time this year to get it done. All the planets are direct. If there are conversations you need to have, have them now. This is the moment in time where there will be a lot of clarity and a lot of support for making strides. And we don't get a lot of this in the second half of the year. Frankly, looking at the retrograde energies of the second half of the year, it's a little bit of a cluster, but <laughs> we'll get through it because we always do. We've been through tougher years. We'll get through this one too. But what I'll say is if there are moves to be made, do not, do not delay, like go directly, like don't pass, go, don't collect $200, like go directly to get it done. Make moves. This is the time, um, especially for divine counterparts and light workers. This is the moment in which you're going to find the most support to really start 
putting things in motion to facilitate new pathways in your life. Um, lastly, this energy can present like super sexual, not going to lie. It's a very sexual energy, Jupiter sextiling Venus and Mars and Juno in conversation with Pluto. Um, if it's time for sexy time, have the sexy time. Do not hold back. There is a couple of things going on here. This full moon in Leo, Leo can represent children. It can also represent creativity, North node and Taurus. Getting to later this year, speak with Uranus. This is a super fertility transit for sure. Um, and Uranus uh, speaking to that Venus Mars energy. I mentioned it in one of the channeled messages last year that there are a lot of twin children or children needing to be born of twins that are trying to ease their way onto the earth. Um, at this time, there's a bit of an urgency in having that light worker energy come onto earth at this time. So if it's sexy time and you know it, clap your hands. I don't know, like just do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold back because there's a real, there's something in this energy that is needing to be, it's like life force energy, pure life force energy. And it needs to be cultivated, stoked, created. It's asking for expression through this full moon in Leo. So, you know, trust your life. If this is, you know, something that's kind of happening, I know a lot of twins have a lot of anxiety and, you know, pain about like, well, you know, my counterpart only ever shows up to have sex with me. There's a lot of reasons why that happens. I've actually got a channeled message about that, that I'll be sharing with you guys next week. If you're in that kind of limbo place, but sex sort of shows up during this full moon in Leo, my strong recommendation would be to work with it because I think it would be extraordinarily healing. Trust your life though. Trust your intuition. Trust your sovereignty. If you're a no, it's a no. Use the energy in another way. But if you're, a, if you're pulled to it, trust your life, trust your energy, trust your intuition, trust there's a divine purpose to it for you. Okay. All right. And that concludes this full moon in Leo for twin flames and divine counterparts. If you'd like to book a reading, you can do so over at K moon Astro. If you heard something that resonates, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. Definitely hit that notification bell so that you know, when I'm live during shadow work week, you can get your questions in because shadow work is going to certainly be a theme of 2022. Can't wait for that. And I look forward to chatting with you if you are so called. Thanks so much. Take great care and bye for now.